adaptations of things that I love just because they're adaptations of things that I love. If it doesn't interest me, I'm not going to. I'm fine being a fan of the original thing and not. I still never watched Fate the Wink Saga. I have no interest in watching it, you know? I don't really have interest in the new live action. Avatar, I just, I don't feel the need to watch everything just because it's an adaptation of something that I love. Um, I usually wait and see how other people feel about it and then gauge my interest levels of that. But I don't know, I feel like more, I protect my own peace a little bit being like, I can love the original thing and keep loving that thing and not watch the adaptations. And then interrupted me, oh my God, I'm sorry. When you're ready to come hang out with me. Um, of course, babe, of course. First Tales of Song you heard. Love story, and I called it the Romeo and Juliet song, and I was so obsessed with it my, that my dad banned it. And then my mum bought me debut um, as a present because I got really upset that my dad was being mean to me. And then for my birthday, I got Fearless too. When that was out. Um, and I was obsessed with them. And then for either my birthday next year or Christmas, I got the Fearless Platinum Edition, which had the extra songs. Um, but I also had the DVD where it had the behind the scenes of the music videos. Um, Percy, hi. And I was obsessed with that. And that's where I fell in love with her as a person, um, as well as her music. But I used to not be able to fall asleep when I was a kid if I wasn't listening to Debut or Fearless. What got you into Marvel Comics? Um, I was really into uh, the Spectacular Spider-Man cartoon. What's up, Percy? No, 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 no. Don't scratch the walls. It's not a nice sound. You scratch scratching posts. Um, I was really into the Spectacular Spider-Man cartoon series and that made me want to read Spider-Man comics. Um, I didn't branch out into anything except Spider-Man stuff until after I got into the MCU. I only read Spider-Man comics for a good, like, six years. If I did, I'd watch the OG. Yeah, honestly, like, we had to try to stop. My fave story. Stop. You're my favorite human. Hee <laughs> hee. Don't just live action Lenny. I heard the live action One Piece is good. I haven't watched either of them yet, though. Whoops. Where are we not? You can finish it. That's so fair. That's so fair. I think that's a better way to live your life. One Night of Your Era show was your fave. Um, like Sydney Night 4, because like the surprise songs were tailored to me and I had really good seats. Uh, but I think Sydney Night 4 and Melbourne Night 3 were my two favorite shows. Um, Cause like the vibes, like I had so much fun Melbourne Night 3. Um, it was just such a joyous night um, and then Sydney Night 4 was so emotional because like she, I was so close to her and the surprise songs were f insane. Insane. So. Brewing says right for a pot of coffee. I mean, we can still claim it for brewing. I, I still say yes. Which is phenomenal. I've heard good things. I have heard like legitimately good things. Kind of with your recent Black Cat video. I mean, that's quite literally the, the, the current run of Amazing Spider-Man issue, like, I don't know, early on, but like probably around like issue eight, nine, that's basically the, what their dynamic was, was Felicia being like, mm, I'm kind of worried about you, I don't know if I want to go and pay Peter being like just having suicidal ideations. That was quite literally what was going on. So that was fun. <laughs> Okay, no rough like that's that's how they get it. Godzilla Con no yeah, fight. I will be. <laughs> um I have read most of the manga. I want to consume both. Both. The oh, errors looks like hello so good. Thank you so much for saying that. Oh my god, I I really appreciate that. Um it was a really fun time to have an excuse to just make a bunch of Taylor Swift costumes and my Sabrina Carpenter one and to spend way too much money on getting some like Taylor Swift costumes. It was a really fun time to have that excuse and it was really fun to like go to the shows and make really elaborate costumes because I, I made so many friends and I got to trade with so many kids I think because of that. Godzilla or Congo. I'm more of a Godzilla girl. Personally. 
personally. So never do one of your cosplays ever again, which one would you pick? Can I do a better version of them? Or can I like, I'm not allowed to cosplay that character ever again? Because I have different answers depending on them. So after to your Craigslist, thank you so much for saying that. Thank you. It was, yeah, it was really, really fun. It was very good for my brain to just be able to dress up in like my favorite tour costumes that she's, that she's worn like ever, so. You're so pretty. You're so pretty, babe. Never that character ever again. My scapegoat answer was Quinn for Bray. <laughs> um, because I could not curse my hair again and like be fine because I don't like make content for hair anymore anyway. I just enjoy having that costume. Um, but if I had to like... What are you doing, sir? Millie Clark. Back. Mood. I want a Millie Clark in more things, please. I'm gonna read a chapter because I feel like I've been talking too long. But it's a short chapter, so we can keep chatting in a second. I just need to feel productive. Chapter 4. I'm taking him both for smoothies. The first request arrived the next day. At least I've gone through all my classes this time. I survived math, kept my eyes open through English, had a nap in study hall, my favourite class ever and got to meet the swim team in seventh period. The coach said our first swim meet would be on Thursday. No problem, as long as I remembered not to breathe underwater, swim at Mach 5, or come out of the pool totally dry. Those things tended to get me strange looks. It wasn't until I was on my way to meet Anna, Beth, and Grover at Hembro Juice after school that I got accosted by a god. I was sitting on the F train when someone's shadow fell over me. May I join you? I knew instantly that I was in trouble. Nobody talks on the subway if you can avoid it, especially to people they don't know. No one ever asks if they can join you. They just wedge themselves into whatever seat is available. And besides, the cart was almost empty. The guy in front of me looked like he was about 20. He had short cropped black hair, large brown eyes and coppery skin. He was dressed in ripped jeans, a skin tight black tee and various bits of gold. Rings, earrings, necklace, nose ring, wrist bangles. Even the laces of his boots glittered gold. He looks like he just stepped out of an ad for some Madison Avenue boutique. Buy our jewellery and you will look like this dude. I caught a whiff of cologne, something between clove and cinnamon. It made my eyes water. He said something again. What? I asked. He gestured to the seat next to me. Oh, uh, thank you. He plopped down in a cloud of two sweet smelling fragrance and looked around the train at the six of the riders. He snapped his fingers like he was calling a dog and all the people froze. Not that you could really tell any difference. So, he spread his manicured fingers and his kneecaps and smiled sideways at me. Percy Jackson, this is nice. Which god are you? He pouted. What makes you think I'm a god? Lucky guess. <laughs> and I went to all this trouble to blend in. I even put on clothes. I appreciate the effort, really. Well, you've ruined my big reveal. I am Ganymede, beloved cupbearer to Zeus, and I need your help. What say you, Percy Jackson? The train came screeching into my stop. Annabeth and Grover would be waiting. Do you like himbo juice? I asked the god. I'd had all kinds of meetings with gods before, but this was the first time I'd ever taken one to a smoothie bar. The place was packed. Fortunately, Annabeth and Grover had scored our usual booth in the corner. Annabeth waved me over, then frowned when she saw the golden guy trailing behind me. We put in our order already, she said as we slipped into the seat across from them. I didn't know you were bringing a friend. Order for Grover, said the server at the counter. Like most of the dudes who worked at Hippo Juice, he was huge and ripped and wearing a tank top and his smile was blindingly white. I've got a Fiji for a yo, a salty sailor and a golden eagle. An eagle? Where? Shrieked Scanny Maid, trying his best to hide under the table. Annabeth and Grover exchanged a confused look. I'll get the drinks, Grover said, and he jogged over to the counter. The golden eagle is just a smoothie, Annabeth told Ganymede, who was still hunched over and quivering. 